agenda is the financial report. So we'll turn this over to Winneth and let her walk us through that. Oh, that's right. Sorry, I, I wasn't even paying attention. Well, no, you get to walk us through that. Yeah. Is the abbreviated version? on the profit and loss, everything is pretty much the same. Um, you see the, um, the November 18 and the July to November 18, 53, 375, 60. And then that state fund has 15. That's supposed to be 75 percent of what you'll receive later okay. in the spring. You'll receive 25. The rest of it. Okay. We hope. Gross profit, profit, profits. I'm sorry, of 104, 613.15. Um, and then if we go into the bookmobile services and the, the book, uh, public books, and everything's running pretty much as scheduled. The other net income. Yes, so now page two, I think there are two items that I just had a quick question. About. And uh, the first one is on up the there on the, uh, pardon? On the profit and loss? Yes, on the profit and loss on page two. Okay. 
up about the uh, two, four, six, seventh line, six or seventh line down, it says large print. And it's $1,429.65 for November and 93 93.94.03 from July through November 18th. What is large print specifically? Is that like Reader's Digest large print or is it newspapers that are large print? No, it's books. It's books. It's regular books, okay. It's, it's a large print book. Okay, the other one was the Homework Club. And it's 34648 uh, for November and 1297.97 for July through November of the 18th. Uh, what, is, what, is it, what does that encompass? Um, supplies, snacks, the whole deal. For students that are coming in at the after school program yes. or something? So what's the breakdown there of students that are coming from Murray Middle and that are coming from the Callaway County? Do we have any idea? How many come from the Callaway school system in Murray Middle? There are very Shady. few that come from Callaway. I think it's very close. There are very few that come from Callaway, maybe one or two. One or two? How many on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. I don't think they're not on the regular basis. But how many attend on a regular yeah. basis? Yeah. 29 to 30. No, from Callaway. From Callaway? Yes. Oh. A, I know that. It, it's a negligible amount? Yes. Has anybody done anything to solicit uh, or to advertise this in the Callaway School system All the time. to get somebody to come out here? All the time. Okay. They have the information. Okay. It's a transportation issue. Yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, the kids from Murray walk here. Yeah, the kids from right. Callaway. I understand that. The kids from Callaway would have to take a bus, but I'm certain that Murray Callaway Transit Authority or the Callaway County bus system, if the parents were willing to pick them up here, which is the case with the Murray Middle School kids. I'm the sure that they would be willing to. I know, but I'm saying that those parents would probably be willing to sign whatever waiver is required to let their kids take the bus here, and then they'll pick them up at 5.30 or whenever all the kids are picked up. They have the information. Okay. I just want to Any other questions about the financial report? We'll move on to the next item, which is the Regional Librarian's Report. Student. My report is short and sweet. In December, uh, KDLA publishes a public library calendar, which is simply dates that are of interest to uh, libraries. Uh, and of course, uh, due dates for all the many uh, reports required by state agencies. That's the main point of interest. And uh, that happens all year long. It's nice to have that copy of to kind of know when things are going on and what, what kinds of things are being done. So, next item is the director's report. Uh, real quick, um, you have my numbers in front of me. Wanted to uh, point out where uh, we cut the frugal music, so we won't be having numbers for that. That was one of the things that got cut in the budget. Um, I wanted to know if you brought your um, policy packets back with you. I did. The last five open records being the first one to go over. <coughs> did you bring yours back with you, Mark? I probably have it here somewhere. Riley, do you have yours?
dictated in time for me or only if it only if you make changes. Only if you make changes. Okay. Only if you make changes. Right. Yeah, I don't have any any additions or suggestions. Anybody else for this one? Who do you want to know who maintains the open records, like the requests and information? Is it just on file? Okay, you, you have that on file that you're the director's office there? Mm -hmm. Sponsorship, library sponsorship policy. Additional support. And again, that's records for that are maintained in the director's office. Make a motion if we do. Trustee orientation policy is next. Okay, so I know we have a timeline on here that within 60 days they get these items, but do we have, or do we feel the need that there is a timeline for the trustees to go through the training modules on the KBLA site? It's a voluntary system. <coughs> so it would be pertinent to remain to this policy right here. Got that also mentioned in there. What the, the proof I mean, of receipt? Did, she did that for me personally, and I think that for Dr. Rose and Joe Walker, when we came on the board, you did that with everything within 60 days. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she yeah. had it done within about two weeks. Yeah. And she gave me books this way. Yeah. No, I just, because it is strongly recommended that we all do the the training. I just didn't know if we wanted to modify the policy to include that. It says in the KDLA manual that it's a volunteer voluntary thing that you know it's not required to be a board member. Right. So, you know, I applied. Did you do it? 
Doctor, you really did. Riley, you were all, you said you'd already had yours. You said yeah, you I did mine. Yours. Yeah, but I'm just saying, do we want to, do we want to make it part of policy? We could we could choose to do that if we want. I to. think that would contravene KDLA policy. KDLA policy says it's a voluntary program, and they're a little bit senior in the chain of command than we are. So why not? Why don't we just stick with their voluntary program thing? It it is a voluntary program, but. Boards have the authority if they wish to. Uh, a number of boards have it's their own policy that um, all of their board members will be certified. And if they have that as their policy, then that uh, that holds, even though it is a voluntary thing as far as KDLA is concerned. <laughs> if the board decides <coughs> that they want to go ahead and make that uh, extra effort, some do, many don't. Uh, I'm not proposing one way or the other. I'm just saying that's why they're bringing this up because they've probably heard of other libraries that, that do require that. That's up to the board. I just thought since we're reviewing the policy, if that was something that is a germane change to make to this particular policy and as we're reviewing it right now, if that was the change we wanted to make right now would be a good time to do that because otherwise it really wouldn't necessarily come up again until we review these okay. policies again. Well, let me comment on that a little bit sure. further because the time limit is two years for the first one, the lowest level. And then it's another two years before you have to do the second level. If a board member's term is four years, they would rotate off the board. And, and if they were reappointed, they'd start another thing. So you end up with quagmire there uh, of trying to keep track of that stuff and everything else. It says voluntarily, and, you know, I don't know. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't just stick with it. You know, stick with it. Anybody else want to weigh in on that, Dr. Rouse? Ms. Rouse? I agree with Mark. Okay. Okay, that's fine. I, I simply wanted to bring it up as, you know, is that something we wanted to do? So if the board chooses, that's great. Um, any other, everybody okay with the policy as is then? Okay. The trustee orientation is good. <clears throat> you didn't ask explicitly. Mm -hmm. Okay. This Friday? Yes, this Friday. Uh, well, it's, it's going to be he and I that are going over it. Um, he wants to um, kind of go over it with me first, just to um, see what he has put together. And then um, we'll discuss um, that, and he'll set up a meeting with the board. moves us to our next item of business, which is old business. Uh, the first item on the agenda here are dates for 52, 53, 
Um, we had talked, several of the board members had talked about meeting with um, the key architects there to discuss the essential level plus plan and, and some different things. Um, based on information that he's provided with the non, he's got a, a handful of dates that he can be available to meet. That's December 16th, though I'm wondering yeah, if that's... Sunday. Right. It, I, I was be like, coming through this way. Okay. So December 16th, December 18th, January 7th, and January 8th are all dates that he can be available. Um, if we choose to all be there, be present, of course, that will have to be a special call meeting. We'll have to post that in advance. But if we choose for just two of us to be there, we could do that and not have to do that as a special call meeting. But it would have to only, would have to be limited to just two of us. Give me so. the dates one more time sure. in January. It's <coughs> January 7th and 8th. Is that, does, it, does each person have to be at one of them or can we be at one of them? We just pick, I think, one of these dates and contact him and that'll be the date that he comes down to meet with us. These, these are just the four options. He's but he's us. willing to set up like, if he comes down one day and then meet with two at a time, you know, at different yeah. times or you know, just sessions or something like that. Whatever you want to do. January 8th is the board meeting, right? That uh, would be, I think. So he could probably do that early and then, you know, be here for the board meeting. Yeah, January the 8th is a board meeting. Sounds good to me. It might meet with you guys earlier that day and then. Like in shifts? In shifts and then be here at the board meeting that Sure. Night. Yeah, we work out on that. I don't even mind if they, if they have to call a special call meeting for us and let everybody appear at, at that one. But I just don't want to cover any more slot stuff at it. It's an inside joke. But on it, it might be better if um, you know if it was convenient for the board to just have everybody meet and special if, if three or more wanted to come rather than trying to separate it that out. That way everyone hears the same information. Yeah. Uh, well, can all could we do it at, like just do a session prior to the regular meeting? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and but you would need to make right. have a set yes. separate agenda for that and, right. and do it but just yes. do that like starting at like four thirty to five thirty or yes. something yeah. and then regular meeting go into session starting at five thirty. That should work fine. The special call meeting with the agenda would be specific to his report. Yes. Correct. So there's yes. not a not a problem there. So what you think? Have it on the eighth before. If they're from the eighth, that's gonna be perfect. Well I was talking to the parliamentarian about that. And she yeah, nodded I agree with she you. nodded in the affirmative also, so <laughs> but I was actually talking to you, she just nodded. <laughs> so we'll get we'll have Renan contact him and, and set that up. And um, the next is um, follow up from last month, the, the reports from AAA and Bacon Farmer and Workman um, on the Regions Bank building. Do we have the AAA report? Have you gotten any information from them? Uh, yes, I think we have. And in fact, I think that Mark Frederick was presenting a bill for the $650 from the AAA. He's in the audience, but I have not. My wife's in the hospital today and had surgery this morning and this, after, or this afternoon. She went in in the morning. Do we have a copy of the report to view? I do not. No. Like I, I said. spoke with Ron uh, on the phone and he said that he had spoke, I think, with Valerie and she said someone else was doing the um, was doing the work so he said that there was no need for uh, DFW to do the work so they didn't do anything. No, this wasn't for Ron. This was for AAA. Okay. It, yeah, let's address that one first. That was the one for to decide if there was any asbestos or mold. AAA remediation was going to do that. But like I said, I haven't heard anything on it yet. Yeah, I mean, we haven't gotten a report or anything, so. 
And we move that to the next meeting? I guess no, we'll, we'll have, have to. Somebody will need to follow up to, to get. <clears throat> the other aspect of it is, uh, the other day I did get a phone call from uh, the gentleman at uh, uh, RBS that we were going to have do the structural design. And he said he needs to get updated software for his programs and the software will cost eight thousand dollars would we be willing to pay for it i said no so Our, I, rbs is not who we were going to have do it. I, I can't remember who we were whoever we workmen farmer workmen bacon and farmer and workmen work. yeah bacon farmer and workmen and they said that and they asked if we would buy it and i said no no we can't do that i said my budget was fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars and I just want a preliminary study based on the blueprints and a walk through the building. And he said, well, he would have to have that new software. And he said he wasn't going to invest in it, uh, but would we? And I said, no. So now we're looking at finding someone else that can do a study off of the blueprints and a walk through. And I'll get back to the board as soon as possible uh, to let everybody know what's going on there so it's baker farmer and working they give us the new equipment the new yeah they said they needed it eight thousand it would be eight thousand dollars because they would have to update their software and i said well, don't do it you know my budget was fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars and i just want you to look at the blueprints and do a walk through and we there are detailed blueprints available and that was uh they just they just reneged on what they said they would do originally, basically, because originally they told me that at the most it would be fifteen hundred dollars. Then they come back and say they need new software that will cost them eight thousand dollars. And I said, Well, we're not paying for it, so but we'll give you fifteen hundred dollars after you get the software. So Ron Bacon uh, was a little bit disingenuous in trying to get us to pay for his software and I didn't want to do it. So I told him, no, I'm not going to take that up to the board. So I'm tabling the idea that we have a, a structural engineer, engineer to look at it yet. AAA remediation will look at it. So do we have a motion, I guess, then to table this until the next meeting? Until the next meeting, meeting, until I find somebody else that's willing to do what they say they'll do. Yeah. Because that's what, what you know, postponed to a definite time would be more appropriate. Tabling has to be taken back up within the same meeting. Okay. Now would you say that again, please? A postponement to a definite time is more appropriate. To table an item requires that it be taken back up within the same regular session. So you would want to postpone this to the next regular session. So how about January the 8th under the old business that, uh, you can just simply say, I move to postpone this to our next regularly scheduled meeting. And it'll there you go. So moved. Second. So it's... Did, did you get it? Yes. We move to postpone this item until the next meeting by Mr. Kennedy, seconded by Mr. Ramsey. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Back real quick, did we decide on a time? Carries. Did we decide on a specific time we would start that thing on the eighth before the regular meeting? We didn't. Probably we have to talk to Chris to see what would work for him. Okay. Is there anything else that needs to come up under old business before we progress to new business? Okay. So our items under new business. Um, Mr. Walker had requested that audit reports and related banking relationships be placed on the agenda, but seeing as he's not here, I assume this is something that we will skip. Um, does anybody else have anything that they would like to bring up under new business? Uh, yes, I would like to bring up one thing. I had a, I said a, that we had a, an issue uh, that we have a standing committee. And I was not aware and have not been made aware since the day that I came onto this board that we have a standing committee. So then I emailed the director and she emailed me back and told me that there were two committees 
uh, and that the the committees were the uh, uh, the financial feasibility committee and the capital Com campaign committee. But in our bylaws, I see no provision for a, a committee that is. Uh, uh, assigned and under the purview of the Board of Trustees. Is that right? They're not with the Board of Trustees, are they? Here's the minutes uh, that were on October the 9th um, where they were appointed by the Board and it was uh, the external, uh, the internal and financial feasibility and then uh, um, the other was an ad hoc from that and um, here's all the information the question I have, are yes. these not committees that are with the Friends of the Public Library as opposed to the CCPO Board of Trustees? No, they're with the I board can't of find trustees. anything on it. They're with the Board of Trustees. Well, I can't find anything on it anywhere. And if these are minutes, then that these committees should be reporting, correct me if I'm wrong, Madam Parliamentarian, should be reporting at each one of our regularly called meetings. If there's any business. If, if business has been conducted by right. right. My right. understanding is that the last time that they met was like February 8th of 2017. Um, that was when the Capital Campaign Committee um, was put. And then in March of 2017, they didn't have any um, a report to be made. And I believe starting in April that all of that was put on hold. And there was nothing else regarding the action of those two committees because um, basically the uh, expansion and renovation, which is what those two things were connected to, were tabled until we could handle the Higgins House issue, the sale of that property. And that took from April until into early 2018. I've got an update through December 13th, but I know that, that we didn't sell that property until what, March, April, something like that. So those, to my understanding, to my knowledge, those committees have not met again since that time. Then my question becomes, would it not be better for us to have, as under the direct purview of the CCPLA Board of Directors, standing committees that are responsible for that? Because there's nothing that I can find anywhere that defines their responsibilities and defines the terms of each one of the members of those boards. But you're, I don't see that in here. Where does it, where does it say that? No, I kept, I read through it first. Were you talking about this? Yeah, all that stuff you just handed to Riley. There's nothing in here that defines terms uh, and responsibilities. And apparently some of these people have been on these, this, these boards since 2011, when you first formulated a strategic plan. And uh, that would be. No, that was in, they didn't form those. Well, then 2013. So we've got people that are on those boards that on their terms, their terms they're, not they're not boards, they're not boards, they're committees. Or those committees, I, I stand corrected. Actually, I sit corrected. But those people are on boards whose terms appear to be unlimited, unlimited, and by the best, best I can determine from the KDLA standards, that's not a very good practice. Well, if you read through all that paperwork, you would see that, you know, find all the answers. Okay. Can I have a minute to read through all of this again? I've already got that. Those, those are three different things. Part of what you handed him is information you need. Well, this is the minutes of October the 9th, 2013. If we were accepting financial accessibility committees, if we were accepting ad hoc or 
standing committees that would have to be a part of these minutes. Am I correct? If we established a, a standing committee or an ad hoc committee, it would have to be part of the minutes of the date that they were established. That would be the assumption if it was reported correctly. Well, I'm assuming. So, if you look at the February 8, 2017 minutes, it will see that, yeah, and actually the October 9th minutes, if you look under Facility Needs Assessment Committee, land can move to a point three subcommittees. Yeah. And then the board members have a week to... I see that. And what I'm trying to tell you is there's no established term. So since October the 9th, 2013, somebody with LAMP could move to appoint three subcommittees for the facility needs assessment to look into the internal needs, external best practices, and financial feasibility. Committees to be appointed by the board president and director. Westra, Westra seconded and the motion passed. Board members have one more week to submit names for committee. And we did that. I understand that. Now, in that, in this packet here, then, it, it defines how long they can serve. I can't find that in here. I, I, what know. we have in our bylaws is that it says that the Board of Trustees may establish committees as necessary. <coughs> committees have no power or authority except what is granted to them by the full board. Committees may include members that are not on the Board of Trustees. That's what it says. Right. I've already read that. Right. And so, now I've already read the minutes of October the 9th. And now I'm reading the strategic plan updates. Okay. So what do you want to see happen? I want to see happen that if we're going to have standing committees, that this board assigns the terms, uh, assigns the members, uh, and also request that any time they meet and discuss it, that they be open to the same open records laws that we're open to, and that when they meet, that we get a, we get a copy of the minutes of whatever they do. And if they are not meeting, that happens. And if they are not meeting on a regular basis, then they're absolutely superfluous, and we don't need them. It's that simple. If they're not meeting on a regular basis and doing business that's, that's helping the library and helping this board, because if I can call attention to your memorandum of understanding, which is my next question, when did the board sign off on this memorandum of understanding? Because I can't find that either. But this is a memorandum of understanding between uh, the Friends of the Callaway County Public Library and the Callaway County Public Library. And in it, it says on the back, uh, and item number 11, the Friends agreed to engage in advocacy efforts on behalf of the library under the guidance of the library and the library's board of trustees. There is nothing in all of this other stuff that you just showed me in those minutes and everything else that says that they are under the purview of the board of trustees. Am I wrong? So, <clears throat> Am I misreading this? The friends of the library are different than the standing committee. Amen. I think so. Yeah, I know that. Right. So I, I don't understand why you're conflating the two. I'm not conflating uh, why, the two. Why, why are you discussing them together? They're two separate things. I mean, if we're going to address the committees, we need to address the committees. The memorandum of understanding that applies to the friends, friends of, the of the library is a totally different situation. No, it's not. Because the, friend, the committees are not standing committees that are under the purview of the Board of Trustees. They are with the Friends of the Public Library. No, no they're not. not. <coughs> Where does it say that in the minutes? Tell me that. And tell me what tell me what defines their responsibilities and when they are supposed to have regular meetings. And if they are having regular meetings, why they are not subject to the same open meeting laws that we are. And. Uh, I, you know, I think these are legitimate questions, and you know, I don't so I don't so see it. They are not part of this board. Audrey, can I explain the feasibility committee? No, let's wait. No, let's wait. Okay. Well.
I mean, I'm not right sure that you can do that, but you're doing a lot, by the way, and I appreciate it. Uh, I, I want you to understand that. But by the same token, that is not parliamentary. That's not correct. If there's a standing committee that reports to this board, they should be just that, a standing committee. If they don't, they're reporting to the Friends of the Public Library. No, they're not. They're not reporting to them. They Can you show me a single report that they have? nothing to do with each other. Okay. Can you show me a report that they presented to the board ever since uh, October the 9th, 2019? Yes. Yes, I can. Oh, they, and, and it's in the minutes. It's, they it presented it to the agenda. board meeting, yes. And it was part of the agenda. Yes. Because I thought I had. I had requested and got, I thought, all of those minutes, and I never found it in there. So I, I'm just bringing that up. And uh, well, wait, there's two well, different you, things. You, you requested, requested stuff from the Friends of the Library. The Friends you of the Library. Didn't That's stuff. not about the it's feasibility not the same committee thing. or the other committee. Those, Those are not. not. The They're two things. different things. Boy, that got me talking, didn't it? We just said that while we I know going. that. I know it. But this has all got everybody talking, but there's no resolution because I'm telling you right now, I've been with a lot of boards and I've dealt with a lot of standing committees. And I've never been in the situation where a standing committee was ad hoc and op operating over here on the side and wasn't required to at least give a negative report at every board meeting, at every one. For example, if we've got a, a financial feasibility standing committee, that committee should be reporting. And we should have it report. We have a thing in our, minute, in our bylaws that says if a trustee misses four meetings, and how many, and how long? A year. A year. They've effectively resigned. Then if we don't get a report from a standing committee within four meetings, they've effectively resigned. Is, is that in the bylaws? No, I'm saying that should be. Right. It we're not be. getting reports. But there, it's not in the bylaws at this time. Well, we're not getting reports. So. And I've just. Uh, it's not. Me. Well, I'm not right. sure I want it. <laughs> so, there, there are minutes that show I mean I, I went through when I joined the board when I was appointed I went through to, to get up to date and went all the way back to what I have goes back to like 2015 basically our what the board had done at that point with the expansion and I pulled we pulled anything that had to do with that there are places through these minutes that show like where the capital campaign met who they appointed on February 8th 2017 the committee will consist of Jennifer Bryson Ann Landini Wes Bowen and Paula Compton others may be added um, in March 8th 2017 there was no report by the capital campaign one of the things then I, that I believe happened after that was that the Higgins House became the primary focus of what we were doing in terms of the expansion. Everything about the expansion was tabled or at that point until we had more information. And we didn't bring the expansion back up until the Higgins House property sold, which I think what happened there, whether we actually technically took action to do it or not, put those committees on hold. And so they, they, they were not meeting and therefore they were not reporting. Right. And because that's not in our bylaws that they have to do so, nobody addressed it. I move that those committees with regard to the CCPL board of trustees be disbanded and that we reappoint standing committees for financial feasibility or whatever we want to call it, but we give them specific guidelines specific <clears throat> responsibilities with recording with, with regard to uh, reporting procedures and term limits you know I'd like to get Congress on term limits too so I'll be working on that next I, I know you have a motion on the floor but I want to ask our parliamentarian one thing do we need to amend our bylaws to include those things so my question is were those established as standing or special committees 
Okay, special committees, they end when their purpose is... is right, done. because we have, yeah. like, They're for example, special. I know Raleigh was a handbook committee was on that, and we met twice. We had a um, strategic planning committee that Manon, Raleigh, and I met. We met right. twice. There was no need to meet partners. Done. And so then the, the, usually the chair then would accept the, the report and say, thank you, your service is complete, and that's the end that, of it. That's correct. That's right. exactly right. But, but if it's a standing committee. And that's what I, I don't ask. know that we have anything that specifies whether they are standing or special committees. Typically, standing committees would be something that is persistent from year to year to year. A feasibility committee sounds to me like that was a special committee because it's feasibility of something, whatever it was. Okay. And so probably if they have not had any charge, then they aren't meeting and so, so we can just say that they are abolished yes that assumption is done yes so there's no need to have a motion to end Abolish, or disband yeah. or anything now the second part of the question then is if you want to create standing committees then you have to th and you want to change that as part of your bylaws you have to think about the long-term implications of that are you going to forever need a feasibility committee are you going to forever need whatever capital other types campaign, of capital committee. campaign right. committee? If if not, then I would just continue leaving your bylaws the way they are <coughs> with a special committee. And then when you you establish that, the motion is always to establish a special committee to report back or with the power to act. And when you make that motion, that determines what their term is. That determines what their power is. is and then that takes care of it within that uh, that motion. So with those bro with those good. committees as they stand, we could today decide to establish a new capital campaign committee, yes. and it wouldn't matter that we already have people on it. Right. That one's that, is that one's not because it would be for a different purpose. And what would the purpose be? Right, which is what's in our bylaws to do so. Yeah, yeah that's, we have the capability to do that, right. but. We, Whenever, according to Robert's Rules of Order, when you appoint a committee like that, you're supposed to define, define what their objectives are, who the board members are. Basically, in my, my limited experience, uh, you define the term limits, and again, you put down either a date certain that that committee is gonna be disbanded, or an objective that is reached. When this objective is reached, this committee has fulfilled its responsibilities and it's expanded, and we have the opportunity to put more people on a different committee, and more importantly, instead of having two minutes to talk to us at a board meeting, they can have whatever time is necessary to make their report. Right. And, I, and I think that's how they operate. I'll well, be honest. I, I don't know, I wasn't here, but and, and the minutes that I've been given I'm sorry, Madam President, but the minutes I've been given don't reflect that, and and I know well, most of it was before my time too, so I'm yeah, only going by that. what I have. I understand that, but I'm well. just saying, I'm just saying that, you know. So for the purpose of that motion, I will withdraw that motion. There was never a second. There was never a second, yes. but now I will move that we abolish those two committees, and then that we and determine what committees, standing committees or special committees we might need, what the uh, makeup of the, the members of those committees are gonna be, what their term's gonna be, and if they're special committees, what's the date certain that they're gonna be disbanded so we can cancel that that special committee and get another one from other people in the, in the community. Which is, normally how we progress. That's how we did with the okay, well that's strategic planning committee and that's how we did with the handbook committee. I'm, so. I'm agreeing, but, but what I'm saying though is everybody needs to understand that under those criteria, they are, ex wait a minute, I have to wait for a second before I can go any further. Is there a second for his motion? Second. Okay, so it's been moved by Mr. Kennedy, seconded by Dr. Rose, that we abolish the two special committees, um, which are the Capital Campaign Committee and the Feasibility Committee, uh, Financial, Financial Feasibility, feasibility. Um, and that, Mr. Kennedy, would you help me out? 
the at the board the meeting. The, the board. The, the board meets in special session if we uh, special board meeting if we have to, or the Madam President that you put assign two people, excluding myself, that are board members yourself, for example, and Mr. Ramsey, to decide what needs to be done. You see what I'm saying? Well, could we just say that uh, we want to uh, re-examine this issue at a later date? And can, we, can we have the one motion to abolish the committees and uh, then, yeah, I don't know that we need to have a motion for someone to, I mean, we can just... I'm not making that motion. I'm, this is part of the discussion on the primary motion. That's not what I'm making. I'm saying right, that we, we abolish you, those you, two committees and then mm -hmm. after we abolish those committees, then you determine if you want to assign somebody or if you want to Right, so is that still part of your original motion is what I'm asking? Or can we just yes. limit your original motion to be just abolishing the committees? That's what is I'm that saying. We could do that. Okay, yes. so do you have to do one or the other at this point in time? Because you've, you've entered in a very lengthy motion I understand right that, now. but I'm saying that my exactly. motion is exclusively that we abolish those two standing committees. Okay. okay, so stop right stop there. Stop right there. Stop now, as part of the discussion, I would no, say... You no, but you did You actually continued okay. your motion, and so okay, that's why I was trying to get to. I'm sorry about that. that. Okay, so it has been moved by Dr. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, seconded by Dr. Rose, that we abolish the Capital Campaign Committee and the Fe Financial Feasibility Committees. Is there any additional discussion for this motion? Okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Eyes have it and the motion carries. Okay. Now, for the next part of that, yes, us meeting and determining what our committee needs are and then go with this. In the past, how we've handled that is just as issues come up, for example, when strategic plan became an item of new business for us, we determined at that point that we needed to establish a committee to explore developing a strategic plan and we did all of that stuff at that point. That's how we handled that. If, do okay. you not feel that that is... Oh, I understand that, but as a prelude to that, I think that the entire board, not only for us, but for succeeding boards, should be provided guidelines for how to, how to establish a financial needs committee, uh, any special needs committees, or any standing committees, that we provide them guidelines that, that have the term and everything. Robert's Rules of Order, that which you voted into your bylaws to use as your governing law, determines how to establish committees, standing or special. Exactly. Any standing committee that you're going to enumerate within your bylaws has to be done by the process of changing your bylaws. So yes. it has to submit something in writing at a month in advance. And I'll be glad to submit something in writing as to what I would like to see it put into okay. the bylaws. Okay, so we'll then address that. First, first look at it. July. At least. <laughs> Let's get um, other stuff done first. Okay. Um, all right, so I think that's that issue handled. Mr. R Ramsey. That's a question for Director Manon. Sure. Are there other libraries that have what Mark is proposing? And if so, could we take a look at it? Yeah, actually, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. I already checked that right. <laughs> Any other items under new business that need to be addressed? Did I miss when, when you, did you give the director's report? Yes. And, uh, and I wanted to ask you, there are still zero patrons. I'm sorry, I, I missed that. But uh, under computer classes. Because we don't have Because we're not offering the computer class. That's what I mean. But we're, but we're planning on the expansion to provide space for computers and everything. Uh, <coughs> Do you see a need for us to do that? Yeah. It, okay. I just wanted to ask that, to, that question. That's all I had on that. I'm sorry. I missed that. Like Any other new business that needs to be addressed? Okay, hearing none, move on to the public comment section. Um, I've got names, let me get my, my time sheet. We have three individuals who have signed up for public comment. Please note that you have two minutes
to um, share your thoughts with us. Um, the first person who has signed up is me, excuse me, Mary Jane Littleton. Is that the same one that you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda on the public comment sign up sheet is Phyllis Miller. Two minutes, please. I'm going to read an ad that was in today's ledger Callaway County Conservatives for Fiscal Responsibility. We believe taxpayer generated Callaway County Public Library funds should be spent responsibly. We believe taxpayer-generated library expansion funds should be spent to further the interests of the community and not to benefit friends of members of the Library Board of Trustees. We believe the Library Board of Trustee members should avoid the appearance of corruption and act only in the interest of the taxpayers and community. We believe that bad real estate investments made by private citizens and commercial properties with no appreciable value are not the responsibility of the Callaway County Public Library nor the taxpayers of Callaway County. We believe that revitalization of downtown Murray is not the responsibility of the Callaway County Public Library. We believe the conservative course of action for library expansion should result in a modern library structure that provides long-term value for taxpayers. I consider myself a progressive or a liberal but the Callaway Conservatives have gotten it right. And by the way, uh, I'm glad you removed me as financial feasibility. I've made two you're reports. Welcome. My mandate was when you decide on what you're going to do with this library, then our committee would be in process again. Thank you for your service. And my letter to the editor, I'm pretty sure is why you did that. The next nope. person on the list is John B. Griffin. You have two minutes. Um, we've seen a number of figures floated around and we continue to wonder why uh, it has been recommended that we're looking at a $16 million or an $18 million scenario when what is apparently needed for the structure is 3.4. And why interest rates on these things are not at the municipality level, why they're much higher. These numbers that are thrown around and in the public and in the media seem to um, be far inflated over what's actually been needed by the uh, uh, feasibility studies in the past. And I wonder if you could address that. Do you want me to address it? Sure, I'll be glad to. So. I'll, I'll be glad to, to, to tell you what my numbers are. And they're very simple. The plan that is that is right up on the board right now and on the table for us is anywhere from $6.4 million to $7 million in total cost to renovate this building. That's just a renovation of this building. Now, in order to do that, we, let's say that we have... Renovation and expansion. Renovation and expansion. And that if I say renovate, it means everything. Renovate and expansion. So the renovation in this building is going to cost... Anywhere from, I'm, I'm saying that the, the numbers I'm looking at are probably 7.1 to $8 million. And if we, if we put down $3.5 million, it's going to cost us 8.8, let's just round it off to $8 million minus $3.5 million. And the bond outlay, if we purchase that, if we do that by means of floating a bond, we're not raising the taxes on Callaway County, are we? No, because that has nothing to do with the tax structure. But you know what? The debt load on a bond of that magnitude is going to be $300,000 a year. It was $290,000. But now because of interest rates and inflation, it's gone up to about $300,000 a year. For 30 years, that's $9 million over a 30-year period of time. It, we could cut it back to a 20-year period of time, and it wouldn't be quite as much, 
But no matter, and that's why I said 16 million to 20 million, because no matter how you work it, 9 million and 7 million of overall cost is an overall cost to the library for 16 million dollars. It really comes out to about 16.7 if it's a 30 year debt. The debt load is going to be paid by who, us? Yeah, we're going to write the check for the debt load. But guess where the money comes from that we write that check out of? It comes from every person sitting in this room and every person sitting out in the county. And I'm going to tell you folks something. There are not a lot of people out in the county that are enamored of this position. And I've got people telling me, and I'm asking them to please wait, because I've got people telling me, why don't we have a referendum on it like they did the parts tax? And I said, we don't need a, recommend, a referendum. We can find a way to do this if we work together, which was as, where's Ann at? I appreciated your, your hawk proposal, yours. I really liked that. And that was a classy act. But that's why I said it originally. Let's have another look together. Now, demagoguery that says it's not our business, it's all of our business to help that downtown. And it was a win-win situation. If we can put this into that bank building for $4 million, which we might be able to do, we don't owe anybody a nickel. Not a nickel. But the plan that is on the table right now is not very cost effective, and it's going to cost, and it's an ad hoc tax on the citizens of Callaway County, even though it's not part of the library tax. But I've already got people coming up to me of all walks of life. I can't even direct traffic at a Murray State basketball game without somebody pulling their car up and saying, hey, I ain't in favor of that, and I don't want my taxes raised, and that's just raising my taxes through the back door. And I'm telling everybody, please settle down and wait. I'll tell you what. Let me, let me give you some of what, the way I feel. Chris Christopherson wrote this. I'm sure that... There are many of you that are my age in this crowd that remember and know Chris Christopherson. And he said, if you waste your time talking to the people who don't listen to the things that you are saying, who do you think's going to hear? And if you should die, if you should die explaining how the things that they complain about are things they could be changing, who do you think's going to care? I'm going to keep speaking and until somebody starts listening, and I'm going to try to do the best that I can do, as I've said before, for the children in this county, number one, number two, for the library in this county, and number three, for the taxpayers of this county. And that's my answer to your question, John. I'm sorry I took so long. Did I answer it, John? Oh, you gave me an answer, but I... Okay, I, I, didn't think, I didn't expect you to agree with it, but that's okay. So that concludes our public comment section. Um, the next item of business is closed session, if necessary. Let me, let yes. me ask. Uh, so, could we go back to uh, new business, Roman number seven, part B? I, I had meant to bring something up. And we really can't at this point. I mean, we've moved past that in the agenda, correct, Dr. Bella? Okay. So well, we'll just have to wait till next time. But I, I would like to move that we go into executive session for the purpose of discussing the possible acquisition of a piece of property. Is there a second? I second. Okay, so it's been moved by Dr. Rose and seconded by um, Mr. Kennedy that we go into executive session to discuss the acquisition of a piece of property. Possible, possible acquisition. Thank you of a piece of property. Um, is there any discussion on this motion? Um, I received a call today from Mark Frederick, the owner of Regent Bank, inviting me to a tour. I, I don't have enough information even for possibility of acquiring property. I don't think it's that. Say again? I don't think it's for that piece of property. Oh, it's not for that piece? No. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll withdraw my objection.
The owner of that bank is sitting in the audience, and if you want a tour of it, he'll be glad to give it to you. Oh, okay. So is there any and other I resent the fact, by the way, that by to the motion on the floor? Okay, if not, let's vote. All in favor of going into closed session? Aye. Signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no? No. I'm going to go with the aye just for the, to, sure. to explore it. So, so the motion carries. Um, if we want to note that Mr. Ramsey voted no, we can do that. Um, so, we do need to clear out the, um, the auditorium at this moment so that we can discuss this um, all. Uh, I'm sorry, Susan. Another option is the board would, would that be simpler for us to, to move? Okay. Why don't I, go ahead and be seated. We're going to go discuss this in the other room, and then we will come back and, and, um, Adjourn the meeting at, at that point. This is the last item of business. <laughs>